Thank you very much, Joe. Clouds nines indeed. First and foremost, all hail the Never prophet. Never doubt, my children. All hail the prophet. Uh, I want to kick things off and make it very clear. NA is indeed greater than EU. Let's Ooh. kick this off. Uh, pick some bands. I want to go straight to pick some bands. And, and Korea, apparently. I, I want to talk about these picks and bands because I looked at the statistics behind both these teams and it seemed like the blue side was really going to affect Cloud9 for the best. And you said it would not. And in the end, High got a champion that yeah. he was actually able to perform. They got really comfortable champions for every role. And it showed it was a really like back and forth game. But in the end, it was a rumble from balls that paid off. We've seen him time and time again for years now. Every single one of these champions at some point or another is one of the preferred champs for these players. One of the big stories that the casters were talking about was how the top laners got their respective, you know, preferred champs statistically and, and favorable, Save's best stats are on Kale. Um, and we were discussing how do you deal with Kale when you've got Hourglass, uh, how is Zed gonna deal with Kale when there's Hourglasses and etc. cetera, et cetera. Monty, team comps, what did you like or dislike? I mean, I, I think that this game was not so much determined by team comps as it was just by smart rotations overall. And that's where Cloud9 really excelled. And I think you, when we think about Notch and White Shield, we think about them as this very late game team. But uh, I mean, Cloud9 beating them there is just a testament, I think, to how good Cloud9 strategy is. And they used their, their Zed pick extremely effectively, getting down that inhibitor on the Baron bait. It was a very crucial pick for them. And they played it up really, really well. Just before exactly. we get to you, pull uh, that replay up. Right, I was gonna say, yeah, we have a replay actually. I, I can do it too, don't worry. I posted the analysis desk before. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, very marvelous sort of Baron Bait inhibitor take by Cloud9. Bef before we start it, I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, specifically, when you do this kind of a thing, if you're ever playing this game yourself, uh, number one, vision control. Um, using both wards and minions, High never shows until he knows where Nodge and White Shield is. He will never walk in to a knowing 1v2. And so it's up to his team to pull everyone else into vision by going to Baron disengage. Let's roll the clip out and you're going to see what Cloud9 does here. So they start up on Baron. It's pink warded, so they know they require some kind of face check or they just get Baron. Like, no matter what, something good happens. So Nodge and White Shield comes over. They force the TP. They say, guys, they are here. High, go for it. And now High is on the end. Inhibitor. And now they say, oh, High is going to pull attention. Guys, get ready to put some, some pressure back on the map. Cloud9 has been actually persistently hitting the minion wave down in mid lane as well. And this is just a nice all in here. Uh, he potentially could have shadowed to dodge the bubble if he wanted to, but he gets the kill regardless. And then the escape is actually interesting because uh, he tries to outplay the charm, but it's actually very well played by Goong. He saves it for a very long time, makes high juke like three times, and then lands a point bank charm to get the kill. Grepo, talk me through what Cloud9 was doing in terms of their map play and, and controlling it, because even though it was very close for a long time, you felt like Cloud9 were in control for a large portion. Uh, not convincingly, but they were dictating the tempo. I just think they played really smart, and just that rotation alone highlights how, how well they understand the game, because they needed that at that point to get back into the game. I think at that point they were like 6,000 gold down, perhaps, but the the real beauty of Cloud9 came on how, how well they respected the invisible uh, Twitch, because they kept fishing with skill shots to find him whenever he was likely to come. Whenever they saw Nami walk up in lane, they were like, yeah, she's never going to be here alone. Don't engage on that. There's definitely a Twitch near. Let's spam some rockets in the general direction, see if we find him. And then the unsung, or just the sung hero of this match is, is basically balls. Those rumble ulties were just Ooh. insane. Yeah, now, I ahead. think that one of the key things that allowed Cloud9 to make these really good rotations was the fact that we rarely see a Kha'Zix come out with a Sightstone. And they go, they're doing double Sightstone on a very unconventional jungler that, that may throw off... Um, Najin off shield because uh, Najin off guard just because when you play against Kha'Zix you're thinking oh he's gonna be this tanky guy that's just I mean uh, this really high damage guy and not tanky support he went with a really heavy tank and utility oriented build until the very end where he got a last whisper and he had a GA hex drinker the Merc boot so he was just a really utility oriented play style of Kha'Zix that allowed uh, Zed to make plays. I want to talk about some of those team fights. Let's pull the second replay up onto your screen. It was one of the more chaotic ones, and I think, uh, Krepo, you were quite excited about this, if recalls. Yeah, yeah, so before we roll this clip, I just want everybody to look at the minimap. Just take take a nice look there and see those red giant balls of doom approaching both side lanes uh, for Cloud9. So all she'll have to do is nothing. If you wait right here, you win the game just by doing absolutely nothing. The only way you can lose is if you go for a fight right now and you die. And that's what's going to happen. They're going to go They're going to go out, not wait for the silence to push in and draw Cloud9, Cloud9 members back. So if we can roll the crypt right now. 
We're gonna see Zephyr. Yes, he wants to go for a pick. Yes, that's good. But he overextends way too far. And just look at what balls is right now. That equalizer that's gonna come out is just gonna be insane. They also disengage with Lemon. And look, like the entire team is split up right now, so they don't know what they're doing. And Goon goes in from the side, and he wants to go aggressive. Zony has bait, and his entire team is backing off in the back. Kale to gets used as well. I don't know. I don't know what what Weissu was thinking here. Just look at the side lanes. Yeah, exactly. Not only the side lanes, but honestly, at that point, even the Zephyr's engage wasn't the worst thing in the world as long as they went back afterwards. But they walked forward. Goom split off to try and kill a Rumble that had his own yeah. and had already used his equalizer, so he's not a priority target, especially when he's at that distance. All you have to do at that point is walk back. Uh, because instead they like stood in the equalizer for longer than normal. You just walk back in that situation. You take that win. You say, okay, no more equalizer. We have two heals on this team with Nami and Kale. We'll just continue to stand at Baron, and you can't stop us anymore now because no ult and our, you have to deal with these I minion agree. waves. I agree. Just a really mixed call there from Shield, and I think I think you're absolutely right. That's what cost them the game. Very good strategic calls from Cloud9. Just to remind everybody, with that victory, it does mean that they advance to the quarterfinals and will be doing a rematch against S.H.I.E.L.D. later. Let's take a look at where the teams stand as there's only one regular game left in this group stage. We've just wrapped up that matchup over in Group D with both Cloud9 and Najin White Shield on 4-2. Uh, it's simple for Group C, however. Win one game and go to quarterfinals, lose a game and go home in our final showdown be uh, between OMG and LMQ. And then as I've already reiterated, that tiebreaker position for uh, Cloud9 and Najin White Shield. I want to look at the playoff bracket really quickly and just talk about some of the theoretical possibilities. First and foremost, we know Samsung Blue is locked into the top half of the bracket. They will be playing the loser of Najin White Shield or Cloud9. Over in Group D, uh, the winner of, Cl of Cloud9 versus Najin White Shield will then do battle with either LMQ or OMG. So we're about to find out who the final quarterfinal matchups will be. We're going to step away for just a moment, but when we come back, China's OMG heads goes head to head with North American LMQ in a winner take all match. You guys do not want to miss it. Let's do it. Let's play it good. Let's play the best we ever will, and I'll be happy. Where is he going to go? Equalizer onto three of them. Deathmark goes to the back. Watch is definitely going down. Actually surviving for now. Oh, Zephyr. They're going for Zephyr. There is the invulnerability. Balls goes low as well. This is a big, messy fight. Meanwhile, over by the Baron. Meteos gets Zephyr. Gets the reset. High is all over the place. And will pick up the on to save. Balls still alive. Finished up by Watch. Well, Watch is going down as well. Sneaky, Sneaky get in there. there. He's full HP. He could be a hero for Cloud. Right now. Oh, he's oh, he gets stunned up and finished off! Goon uses his oh. gorilla low in the back. Sneaky coming around after using his QSS. It's going to be Cloud9 to win this one. They take out one. They That's lose game. the Zephyr. That's the game. 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 That's the game.